World of Warcraft has been going on for nearly 20 years now. It's seen a lot of changes along the way, both loved and hated, yet its player base still remains some of the most dedicated, and people who have long moved on still reminisce about their time in WoW. I personally started WoW at the end of the vanilla life cycle, thanks to my boss at work, and while I haven't played live servers since my mythic days in Legion, I've been very active in the private server community. This last year has been a year of great change for me, and while I did try returning for the release of Classic Wrath, eventually I realized it wouldn't be feasible with my hectic schedule and new family to take care of. There was just no way I was going to be able to stick to any regular raiding schedule. So I amassed a huge following and decided to start my own private server with thousands of players just like me, and I lived happily ever after. The end. Okay, so it was a bit more complicated than that. I love WoW. I have dreams in WoW. Heck, my retirement plan has WoW in it. And I had a new kid, which means he and I were going to be amazing WoW buddies. But then I thought about some of the more sensitive elements of online gaming, and realized it might be better to come up with something of my own that was a little bit more curated for younger audiences. I don't particularly want my son to have to experience meat spin. So I started digging around for single player servers and repacks. I knew I didn't want to play on a server or repack that had boss fights heavily modded for single players, since that's just boring and trivializes everything. I also still wanted that MMO feel of thousands of players logging in every day, ready to quest, grind, and do world PvP, but I figured that would be a shot in the dark at best. But lo and behold, I came across this shady website called the Single Player Project and found out to my great delight that yes, you can have thousands of bots logging in every day. Yes, you can run dungeons, interact, quest, and PvP with them. You can buy, sell, trade, and even use the auction house. And yes, you can raid with them. Although it is limited unless you're doing easy raids like vanilla or modifying certain fights or making player bots do more damage and healing. But the upside is that no one complains about not getting any loot or being benched for raids. I also knew that I wanted to customize my server for things I always wanted in the game, or to change things I hated, but frankly, I had no coding experience. Then again, I did become literate in Japanese in just two years, and was a linguistics major, so I figured it couldn't be all that difficult to figure out. And man, did I learn things. Mostly that any help I found on the internet was either in Russian, or so terribly incomprehensible that I didn't want to bother learning yet another language. But among all the confusion were a lot of good hints and bits of advice to be found. I just had to know where to look. Initially, I was happy just playing the private server with bots and reliving my childhood on my terms without anyone to dictate my rating schedule. It was nice being able to stop mid-dungeon, feed my kid, and then come back 30 minutes later to all my party members just happily waiting for me, ready to start killing things again. But I wanted more. I wanted a challenge and to create something I was proud of. I wanted my son to feel what it was like playing WoW for the first time without endless guides to be found on the internet. So I started changing and adding things to the game. I ended up using vanilla as a base, figuring I would work through each expansion, learning more and more as I went. Let me just say that although vanilla is very endearing, I find Wrath systems to be nearly perfect, and decided that I might also implement some of the changes from later expansions too. I added so many things to the game. I made new patrolling, 10-man bosses in both Westfall and Raven Hill. I added a badge system, allowing you to purchase upgrades for doing both PvE and PvP, making the leveling process more exciting and the end game more rewarding. I made world buffs more accessible, new mounts, new item drops from bosses, heck, even new world bosses. I even went back and selectively added in updated items from TBC and Wrath into dungeon loot tables. 
I added so many quests to both sides that were faction exclusive, and new requests for so many zones that I can't even remember them all. New class quests, new points of progression, new NPC and player bot interactions, old spells, new spells, and on and on it went. I even went and looked at historical auction data to make auction prices from the AH bot more accurate. Sure, initially I may have made some rather overpowered items, but eventually I went back and scaled things back down to a more reasonable level. I also ended up increasing mob health and damage significantly, as well as adding spells to certain bosses to help compensate. So what's the point to all of this, you might be asking? The point, my friends, is that we're only limited by our creative choices. While what I did may seem special, and it certainly feels that way, most of it was just a matter of looking up wiki pages for information and changing data tables. Yes, it's a lot of information at first, and yes, you may have to learn some C++ and Lua, but the private server community has been around long enough that the majority of the groundwork has already been laid out for you. I'm very confident that with the tools at your disposal, you could create something enjoyable for you and your friends to play as well, and even do it better than me. You will make mistakes along the way, and that's fine. There will always be something just beyond your understanding, or some small hurdle to overcome. But overcoming these moments will become major breakthroughs and accomplishments you can be proud of. I can't tell you how many servers I killed initially, but each following server ended up being better, and I'm definitely still learning. And while I'm still making changes to the vanilla server, I've recently decided to move my attention to a different core, one where I can use Wrath as a base to create a progressive realm, taking players through each expansion, restoring old content and items, and requiring players to complete the previous expansion before moving on to the next. NPCs in the world will be aware of your progress and change accordingly, depending on how far you've progressed. There will be a lot more to it than that with even more custom features than my current server, but much of that is still a long ways off. I'm taking some time currently to learn a bit more Lua and C++ so I can comfortably read the core code and make more of the edits I want to see. This really is a long-term project for me. The decision to switch is probably motivated by the fact that Wrath has some of the best support in the private server community, and likely the most documentation as well. What's more, the core I'm working with is much more modular, meaning there's a lot more cool things I can choose to build on top of. I do believe that the future of the private server community lies in the hands of creators of projects like NPC bots and player bots as more and more people begin to find other ways they can relive their childhoods and have less time to do so. Since shortly after the release of classic servers and their subsequent endings, the popularity of private servers have fallen sharply, but I believe a renaissance is coming. Much of the community has fallen away from Blizz-like and opted for a more personalized experience instead. As technology and accessibility gets better, we're likely to see a sharp increase in the number of servers to choose from, many of which will be entirely unrecognizable to the modern classic connoisseur. And that's a good thing. WoW is a beloved video game that has stood the test of time and is marked by a high level of replayability. That replayability is only improved by creative individuals who decide to take a chance, make a few mistakes, and create new worlds. I don't doubt that this creative drive from the private server community will eventually push Blizzard into rethinking projects like Classic Plus. In fact, the reason we received Classic servers to begin with was because of the large outcry for something people had wanted for years. I do believe that official servers will always have certain limitations, so long as bigwig executives are involved. Many a good video game has been cancelled or ruined due to some schmarmy decision maker who had dollar bills for eyeballs. Private servers, on the other hand, are less constrained in that manner, but they do lack the manpower and creative contributions from people like you. Sure, you may get a cash grab private server that flops here and there, but for every one of those, there's a handful of other extremely creative projects that simply don't have the bandwidth to thrive. So if you've been thinking about jumping in and trying to learn a thing or two, I'd say go for it. You may actually end up creating something you can be proud of. And if you need a hand or some pointers in the right direction, feel free to reach out to me. Until then, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys on the other side of Azeroth.